Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Join News Today. We're coming to you live from our studios in Kokum Limli. We're on DTT because we're free to on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 125. Join News is your home of independent, fearless and credible journalism. Coming up this afternoon, expand the scope of investigations to include district and regional commanders under whose watch illegal mining is happening. That's the call of security analyst Adam Bonner following the arrest of two police officers and eight others for allegedly engaging in illegal mining in Juaboso in the Western North region. We have details and also hear from the Forestry Commission, which is leading this latest fight. Also, failed promises by underperforming assemblymen potent to significantly drive high voter turnout in the upcoming district level elections. That's the view of the NCCE in the Ashanti region ahead of next week Tuesday's local polls. Plus, researchers from Kaspersky reveal the existence of WhatsApp and Telegram modifications for Android devices that have embedded malware coded in Arabic and Azerbaijani. We have details of a letter from Ghana's National Security Minister to the Communication Minister to take action. And public health crisis looms as health authorities record a surge in typhoid fever in some communities in the Pru East District of the Bono East region following the contamination of drinking sources by the recent floods. My name is Aisha Brian. We're also live on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X Spaces for our Joy News on TV. My personal handle is at the Nana Aisha. Please stay for details. Two policemen and eight others have been arrested by the Rapid Response Unit of the Forestry Commission in the Joabuso district of the West North uh, region. They include four Chinese nationals identified as Men Xing Yu, 30, Wen Yong Cheng, 30, Wen Fung Lin, 58, and Li Ping, 60. Their four Ghanaian collaborators, Edward Ousu, 25, Kwesi Frank, 42, Abu Dramani, 41, and Joe Nabori, 27. The two police officers, Detective Sergeant Yahaya Andrews and Lance Corporal Azantilo, believed to be protecting them, were also arrested at the mining site inside the forest reserve. During interrogation, Detective Sergeant Yahaya Andrews told the team that Chief Inspector Duse Nega ordered them to patrol the Kokosua Forest Reserve close to Asempene, where they are stationed. The Kokosua Forest Reserve has come under siege recently by illegal miners who have already destroyed large portions of it. It is one of the many forests Joy News' Erasto Sasaridonko has reported on extensively in his forest under siege and poison for gold documentaries, which necessitated the recently held Joy News National Dialogue on Illegal Mining. Speaking on the development, security analyst Adam Bonner is calling for investigators to broaden the scope of investigations to include senior police officers and even regional ministers under whose watch the police officers operate. He spoke to me earlier on Newsdesk. Uh, obviously, there will be involvement of other personalities. The scope of uh, investigation should be widened. So, the former local government minister actually said, Hajia said, DCEs are involved. They should broaden it. Regional ministers are involved. It should be broadened because then our forest cover is getting destroyed. Police officers who are supposed to be protecting the you know uh, criminal you know protecting the environment protecting this uh, our forest cover uh, the people who are also involved and now they are mentioning what's the name uh, a senior officer obviously every police officer in this country is accountable when i say it's account it, it, you, it, you 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 we have to account they are supposed to be accountable to somebody if you are doing that count if you go to that area they are under a certain district commander, a certain divisional commander, a certain regional commander. And so if you look at their mode of deployment, unless you are on leave, 
every day, if you are supposed to work for eight hours, there is a book. There is a, a you know, a, a station, a, a station book where you enter your name, where you went to, what time you came back. And so they should broaden the scope. And for these officers, it's a shame. And I do know that the IGP has been very uh, swift when it comes to dealing with some of his own. And this people should should be punished severely. They should face the law courts together with all the people involved. And it should just not be limited to what's the name, just the police officers. I am telling you that there is no way these things can take place without the involvement of, you know, the district, you know, uh, the, the district security council. Because the district security council, who is usually chaired by the district, the district, uh, What's the name? Chief Executive, the, the municipal, and the rest. These are persons who we know that some of them are involved. In this particular one, I'm not involved. But what I will say is that I will be surprised that they, these guys probably have been mining. For how long have they been mining in this forest? And so I'm waiting for one person to come and tell me that the, the district chief executive in the area does not know that this mining is going on. If he can come and say that he's not aware of the mining going on, in that area, in his locality, then I will say he's not fit for the job and he should be quiet. Well, joining us live is the head of corporate affairs and media relations at the First Street Commission, Joyce Ofori Kwafu. For more, I'm grateful for your time. Tell us more about this whole new move by the Commission to scale up its fight against illegal miners. Good afternoon to you, Aisha, and a very good afternoon to all your viewers. Uh, it's good to have you, me on this program. And I must say that this is not a new move. You know, Forestry Commission is charged with the protection of the nation's forest and wildlife resources. And we've been doing it since the establishment of the commission. So for the arrest of illegalities or illegal operators in our forest reserves is something that we've been doing. So it is not a new move. We've been doing it over the years and we will continue doing it till we bring sanity into our forest reserves. Uh, any idea the number of people who have been arrested in this exercise over the period so far? Uh, if I take 2023 for instance, we've arrested 218 illegal operators. They could be illegal miners or illegal um, fellas. And then we've had 24 successful uh, persons prosecuted by the various courts. For the excavators, 106 have been demobilized. Pumping machines, we've had 326 demobilized. Gold detector machines, 15. Uh, Chamfan machines, 60. Power plants or generators, we have um, 36. Pick up trucks, we've seized three, and then some shotguns. So this is something that we've been doing over the years, and for this year, this is what the data I have. We have a lot of cases pending, awaiting prosecution, and we know that as some have been done earlier, these ones too will go through successfully. So that leads me to the question, what the status of the prosecution of these uh, cases are. You mentioned 24 out of the 200, uh, for instance, in 2023. Yes, in 2023, 24 persons have been prosecuted. All the rest are pending at the various courts in the various regions across the country. And we are hoping that by the end of the period, all the people arrested would have been prosecuted and handed over their various sentences. So which areas are you paying more attention, I mean, in this whole fight? I mean, the whole, we are, we are looking at every area. We are looking at every area in all the regions and then various aspects. We, still, we are still doing our awareness creation and sensitization on the need to protect our forests, looking at the climate change issues. Now, we are also doing the law enforcement, which is the arrest and the prosecution of all offenders. And then we are also looking at um, revamping our forests. So we are looking at the various areas to make sure our forests become intact once more. We are not concentrating on a specific aspect, no. It's, it's, it's a whole thing that we are tackling. 
I'm grateful for your time. Joseph Arif Kwafo is the public relations, head of public relations at the uh, uh, corporate relations at the Forestry Commission. Still on protecting Ghana's forest cover, former AGI president Dr. Tenje C believes Ghana has done more harm to its forest reserve than its colonial masters did. Citing research, he warns of a catastrophic future for the country's forest reserve in the next three years. Dr. JC was speaking at the University of Ghana's 75th anniversary lecture. To go. The land covered by present-day Ghana was made up of about 70% forests. Today, that figure has declined to less than 10%. Scholars estimate that by 2026, that is three years from now, forests outside forest reserves will have been completely disseminated. Even within forest reserves, it is estimated that half of such areas are seriously degraded or without any forest at all. The major cause of this destruction is the timber industry, another exploitative industry like mining. To quote one researcher, even though one of the reasons given to justify the struggle for independence in the Dengo Coast was mismanagement of our forest resources by foreigners, forest exploitation worsened in the post-colonial period. Unquote. In plain English, we have done more damage to our forests than our colonial masters did. Why did we do this to ourselves? The upcoming district level elections will record high voter turnout mainly because of the interest of constituents to vote against underperforming assembly members. According to the Asoka Municipal Director of the National Commission for Civic Education, Nathaniel Trenembua Kodia, the field promises have the potential of significantly impacting turnout. The local level elections have over the years recorded low turnout, but Nathaniel anticipates over 50% voter turnout at the polls on December 19. The Electric Commission will conduct the local government elections across 6,272 electoral areas in all districts nationwide on Tuesday. He spoke on Love FM in Kumase. I'm even uh, I'm hoping that it will even cross 50% because, um, as I said, we done a lot of engagement. Mm. They, they express willingness to vote this time to, you know, show their uh, Kokomoti power to the, uh, the leadership mm. because some of them, they said, oh, because the promises that the assemblyman made, he wasn't able to mm. fulfill it, so they want a new face. Mm. For that matter, they will vote whatever means uh, possible. They will use it and vote and then... Um, um, let's say this time around mm. is better than um, the previous... Uh, are you saying that? I've been saying that. Based, really based on, around based on the, 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 the interest of the public, mm. because I remember 2019, we can we, we, we can move to a church and you finish and you, you see people lining up to for questions and they say oh, they won't vote. They won't vote because uh, they haven't seen any development in their community. They won't vote because the promises that the assembly member made, they haven't fulfilled it and all that. This time around, you go to a community I think they've understood the concept of our democracy. So you go to a community and uh, you do the education, they say, oh, fine, the assembly member couldn't fulfill his or her promises, but they will vote and then change the assembly. 29-year-old Zaina Balasan is seeking to make history as the first lady to ever contest a district-level election in the Kokote electoral area in the Ashanti region. Competing against three men, she hopes on improving the current state of the Kokote market and helping to curtail teenage pregnancy in her area. Anita Sewa Joga puts a spotlight on female participation in local governance ahead of the upcoming local elections on December 19. In 2012, there were 29 representing 11% females and 246 representing 89% males among the 275 members of parliament. 
after the 2016 general elections, Ghana's parliament recorded 35 representing 13% female MPs and 240 representing 87% male MPs out of the 275 members of parliament, while the 2020 general elections recorded 40 female MPs representing 14.5% and 235 representing 85.4% male MPs. The situation at the local assembly level is even worse, signifying a decline. Zainab Al Hassan reviews some of the challenges she has faced when she decided to contest the district level election. Oh, I would say um, it was a mixed reaction. And so a lot of people are happy that I came up. Then there's the other side. Of course, you can't aspire for any political position and not expect the other side to come at you. We've had uh, people tell me that, um, oh, you're a woman, go and concentrate on marriage. You're a woman, do this. People actually came to my father to tell him to ask me to step down. They didn't come once, they didn't come twice. They came several times. And I believe it's because they think I am a woman. Because they, we have four other men content, uh, contesting. Why are you not asking them to step down, but you're asking me to step down? Teenage pregnancy and poor sanitation at the Kokote electoral area have been major challenges in the area. Zainab wants to lead the crusade to tackle the menace if elected as assembly member. So I believe as someone who has gone to school, someone who knows a little bit about the going in and out of the assembly and everything, I could be the best person to lead my people to get the things that we deserve as Ghanaians. Currently, I work as a research assistant at the Parliament of Ghana. And being at the Parliament, I have seen the things that are handed to MPs to be moved to their various constituencies, to be given to various assemblies in the constituencies. And so seeing all this, it tells me that a lot of things are going on in the country that the citizenry must benefit from. The cotton market is one of the biggest markets we find here. But the market is so dirty, the market is so deprived of a lot of basic things that a market, a private market should have. We don't even have security men to protect the market. And the only reason why we are taking it as it is is because there's no one who stood up and spoken against it. And so I believe that if I'm given the opportunity to become the assembly member, these are some of the things that I will look into to ensure that those who are being paid to do their job, they actually do the job that they are being paid to do. Although the district level election is non-partisan, some assembly members at Kokote in the Ofenso Municipality Assembly are politicizing the polls. This adversely affects aspirants who are not affiliated to any political party. I am here for them. I am here for the people of Kokote. I'm not here based on any political party. I'm not representing any political party. Although even in assembly elections, it's not even supposed to be partisan. But at this point in our lives in, as Ghanaians, we've turned assembly elections into partisan politics, which is not supposed to be so. But I am not here for any political party. I am not here for my individual interest. I am here because of the community that I grew up in, that I love and cherish so much. And I believe there's a lot that I can lead to do for my community. The Alliance for Women in Media is, however, encouraging the electorate to vote for more women in the district-level elections slated for 19 December to promote inclusion at all levels. For Joe News, Anita Sewa Joga's report read to you. from Kaspersky, a multinational cybersecurity company have revealed the existence of WhatsApp and Telegram modifications for Android devices that have embedded malware called Conaspy, which is coded in Arabic and Azerbaijani. The modified versions are said to be designed to activate the spyware module when a phone is either switched on or starts charging and subsequently establish contact with the server. Details of that research is contained in a letter issued by the National Security Minister Albert Kandapa to the Communications Minister Eslo Wusu for action. I read excerpts of that uh, for you. 
and it indicates that the researchers from Kaspersky have revealed the existence of WhatsApp and Telegram modifications and these modified versions are designed to activate the spyware module when phone is either switched or starts charging and subsequently establish contact with a server to steal sensitive information such as international mobile equipment identity, phone number, mobile country code, mobile network code and details about victims contacts and accounts every five minutes. And it says, meanwhile, uh, Meta, WhatsApp parent company, has filed a lawsuit against three developers in China and Taiwan for distributing unofficial WhatsApp applications, including Heymotes, that compromised over one million user accounts. The above development is forwarded for your attention and necessary intervention given the number of users of the general public on both WhatsApp and Telegram platforms. And it's signed by National Security Minister Albert Kandapa. Well, a data and cybersecurity lawyer and artificial intelligence expert, Desmond Israel, says this could be very dangerous and action must be taken immediately. So for those who like to use um, modified versions of WhatsApp. Still, so, for instance, they want to be able to shadow their WhatsApp messages. They want to be able to change their interface. These are not things that they could easily do um, with their main WhatsApp version because it doesn't allow you to do those things. So they proceed to pick up these off-the-market um, 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 versions of, of, of WhatsApp, which has been come to, to be known as a WhatsApp mode, aka WhatsApp modified. Um, so for now, from my own research, following some of Kaspersky's work, which is beyond just the, the, the release, there are actually three variants that uh, we're dealing with now. So GB WhatsApp, which is also the Hey mode, which you read, um, is one of the versions that, that um, it is pushing these particular malware. And then there is WhatsApp Plus, and then there is AZE Plus. So these are actually three variants of uh, WhatsApp modes that actually carry the, the, tro the Trojan Kani spy. And so, yes, it's important from my perspective. Um, it's, it's critical that users are aware and not to patronize these um, um, versions of WhatsApp. Concerning what um, the expatriation would be used for, you, you read it, so the IMEI number uh, can be picked, uh, phone numbers will be picked, uh, there is even mic recordings. The attack can turn on your mic recordings. They can move data off your external storage. They can actually pull your contact details, and they can also get your country and network uh, codes. Uh, for that purpose, clearly, identity theft is possible. Um, SMS-based attack is also possible. Um, you could also have the possibility of SIM cloning attacks, especially if uh, there is a lot of proximity, as in if they are within reach. And then there could possibly be tracking and surveillance. So yeah, um, anybody would be interested in actually paying attention. We can now go back to our earlier story on district level elections, which comes off on December 19, next week, Tuesday. My colleague, Mamie Singh, Mr. Thompson, is at the Electoral Commission. She joins us with more. Mamie Singh, what is the EC saying about its preparedness towards these elections? In communicating with um, Deputy Chairman in charge of corporate services at the EC, Dr. Bob Manasari, who touched on a number of issues, including the logistics, security, um, and um, participation in the district level elections. In terms of logistics, he tells me that all electoral materials have been dispatched to the various districts um, for the elections to hold place. I mean, in just a few areas that are yet to receive. The election. In terms of security, during the process, they've been in touch with the Ghana Police Service, who have assured them of um, adequate men to man the process whilst it's going on, and also um, indicated that elections is going to go on in all districts, including conflict areas. I mean, um, we know of some months back um, conflict in the OT area um, in Quanta to be in Quanta to be precise and whatnot. And she tells me that. Um, their talks with security in those areas haven't um, advised them against holding the elections in those areas and that it is still going to hold. So until further or until any update on those areas 
elections are still going to go. As we speak, it tells me the Electoral Commission is prepared and ready to conduct the election. Come Tuesday, Aisha. My mate, Senior Mitchell Thompson, with some details from the Electoral Commission. Let's head to the Bono East region, where some communities in Pro East District of that region are recorded an increase in cases of typhoid fever following the contamination of drinking sources by floods. Data at the District Health Directorate shows about 200 recorded cases with 21 complicated ones. A majority of the cases are recorded in the Parambo and Sawaba communities. District Health Director Ramseya Ahmed says community sensitization is being enhanced to deal with the cases. Nanaya Ojima has more. About 12 communities in the Pru East area were flooded after the Volta Lake and Pru River overflowed their banks due to excessive rainfall. The flood left many families displaced. Over 120 homes were affected. Waste from the communities submerged were washed into the water bodies, which are the main sources of drinking water in the communities. Families who rely on these sources for drinking water shared experience. The polluted water bodies are only source of drinking water. We continue to use it for domestic purposes. My daughter had to undergo surgery when she contracted the illness. My daughter wasn't the only one affected. When we report to the health center, we are referred to the hospital for treatment. Many of our people had to undergo surgeries. When we went to the hospital, all children in the world were from our community. Prambo is among communities largely affected by the outbreak. Residents have grappled with insanitary conditions and access to potable drinking water. Nurse manager of Prambo Clinic, Nash Bequin, who is alarmed by the situation, wants the community to take action to improve sanitation and water sourcing. So we alerted the disease control officers to do their investigations. Then we realized that it's the free range that they are doing because there are no uh, toilet facilities in major homes, um, majority of homes in Parambo sub districts. So when the flood came, that means our water bodies were infected, causing the outbreak of um, enteric fever in the sub districts. The typhoid cases that we recorded, children under five were most affected, and women. Yeah, so let's see if we do it like percentage wise, like children will be like 45, and the adult and female will be 35, and the rest is properly. The communities, despite the challenge identified, continue to drink from contaminated sources. Already, health authorities have intensified sensitization in affected communities, including education on treatment of water for consumption. District Health Director Ramzia Ahmed explains. We went to the Sawaba area, did our investigations, and we were able to meet the opinion leaders and advise them on the the. the the causes of the disease, the prevention of the disease, and early reporting for treatment. And so uh, since we did that, uh, the cases are coming down. We are monitoring the cases. For week 48 of the year, we recorded only three cases. So it means that the cases are coming down and the people are also adhering to our uh, advice on the management of the Though the situation is being stabilized, health authorities are demanding measures to improve health situation in the area. For Joy News, Nana Ojima reporting. 
Road traffic crashes in the Ashanti region rose by 24% in 2022 in efforts to reduce road crashes, especially during the festive season. Tipa truck operators and other light vehicle drivers in Kumase have been engaged in road safety precautionary measures. The workshop organized by automobile company Zonda Tech Ghana aims at reducing the rampancy of accidents. Data from the Ashanti Regional Office of the National Road Safety Authority indicates 350 fatalities have been recorded this year, as against 377 fatalities at the same time last year. Zondatech Ghana Limited, a heavy and light-duty automobile company, organized a road safety education for drivers to heighten road crash preventive practices. The second edition of the public awareness campaign engages motorists, pedestrians and the general public on safety measures to prevent road accidents. Human Resource Manager of Zondatech Ghana, Daniel Amwa, says the event forms part of the firm's corporate responsibility. He's admonishing drivers to seek proper and regular car servicing and maintenance. Machines made in such a way that at a point in time it will need servicing. So we want all drivers to take their servicing seriously. Zondatech Ghana Limited one of our core values is to place safety first. We want to reduce road accidents in Ghana, especially during this Christmas period. And checking the statistics from the National Road Safety Authority, you can see that the accident rate has reduced. And we believe we are part of the partners or the contributors to this great achievement by in Ghana Road Safety. The Ashanti Regional Director of the Road Safety Authority, Akwesi Ajenim Boatin, emphasized the need to comply with laid out road regulations in curbing road accidents. So we, are, we are advising uh, most of the drivers to be uh, safety conscious. Let's say observing uh, road traffic rules and regulations, issues like uh, fatigue driving, a lot of people will travel. So we will encourage most of the drivers to have adequate rest uh, before they embark upon their journey. We have a checklist that they are, they are to follow. So if you are to abide by all these rules and regulations, we will have a lot of uh, a minimum issue with the law with respect to road safety and also ensure our safety. Shanti Regional Manager for the Red Cross Society is entreating entities to prioritize first aid education. If you are a driver, the most important thing you need to do is to learn first aid so that in case of any emergency, you can render first aid. If you don't know first aid, and there's an accident, you can't do anything about it. So as a community, as a country, you need to think of how to equip ourselves in first aid so that when there is any accident and casualties are involved, we need to go in there and render first aid. Some beneficiaries said the education has been an eye-opener. <laughs> And that's how she looking at. Reporting for Joy News Clinton. We're still live on Joy News today. We're coming to you from our studios in Kokomlinli. Remember, we are free to air because we're on DTT. Let's take a break. When we return, we'll bring you business. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the business segment on Joy News today with me, Pios Kojobaka. President of the Ghana Institute of Procurement and Supply, Simon Annan, is hopeful the profession will be sanitized after the passage of a practicing bill. According to him, the bill which has been drafted will ensure transparency and enhance accountability in public and private procurement practices. Here's more. Among others, Bill will help develop the needed skills and competencies of participants as far as procurement policies are concerned in both public and private sector organizations. This will help throw more sunlight on the activities of practitioners to stop corruption. Speaking to Joy Business after the annual general meeting of the Institute, Mr. Annan said the bill when passed into law will protect the public purse from abuse. This year... We've made significant progress and it is, it is appropriate for us to update the members on what we've done. So most importantly, we've pushed a lot of effort in advocating for the passage of the Ghana Charter Institute of Procurement and Supply Practicing Bill. This bill, we know, will change the narrative of procurement uh, in Ghana. So as professionals, we want to make sure that the country actually obtains value for money through proper ethical procurement practices, and that's what we are pushing for. 
Ifoma Charles Monwuba is a director at the United Nations Office for Project Services, Ghana Multi Country Office. Procurement is a force for change and can be used to foster innovation, inclusivity, and a bringing of new technology into a country. And when practiced with transparency and accountability, it helps to foster that innovation and yield the public good. Procurement has been used to bring in new ideas into a country by opening it up to competition and not allowing monopoly to happen. Once you open up for innovation, open up for competition, people will come in with new ideas that will transform the country. Human resource practitioners have been urged to use data to drive innovation and improve the working environment. According to Deputy Minister for Employment and Labor Relations, Bright Rekubrobe, the human resource department of every organization must uh, be at the forefront of rapid transformation, which will promote productivity. Here's more. The HR Outlook Conference was used to unveil a new report on human resource development in Ghana, which was conducted by the Chartered Institute of Human Resource Management and auditing firm KPMG in Ghana. The survey assessed human resource management in the country and the way forward. Speaking at the launch of the report, Deputy Minister for Employment and Labor Relations, Bright Ruako Brobe, called for a data-driven innovation to improve productivity. We owe it a duty to guide, innovate, and create an environment where human resources can flourish. The workplace is undergoing rapid transformation, and HR must be at the forefront of that driving change, adapting strategies and capitalizing on the opportunities presented by a data-driven era. The conventional borders of HR have evolved and the advent of data has opened new frontiers. We must redefine HR practice as catalyst for transformation. President of the Chartered Institute of Human Resources Management, Dr. Edward Kwapong, told journalists that the report will be useful for practitioners as it will keep them informed. Uh, we have a broader uh, space to draw on in terms of what others are doing, what the current practices are. And so I think we needed to do this because on our own in the past, we've also uh, conducted some research that was organization based. And most of the time we were Googling to find out what was happening in uh, jurisdictions outside of this country. We need our own uh, survey and uh, re re uh, research findings to be able to guide us going forward. Lead researcher for the report, Dr. Eric Afodazi, highlighted some critical outcomes in the survey. If you look at the, the cycle, the, the highlight in the report starts with the top hiring sources. Right? It's, that is to say, where do organizations in Ghana, as far as 2022 is concerned, get their employees from? We saw a, a surprising addition I said that we have known this for some time, but it appears that the HR body in Ghana uh, you know, is not that conservative uh, anymore. They are using social technologies to recruit. So we saw LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn coming uh, first. So there's a balance of the, the usual conservativeness and then a bit of uh, you know, progressiveness, if you can say, can say so. So you are using employee referral, but at, at the same time, more and more of them are becoming uh, progressive using LinkedIn you know, to recruit. So that's the first uh, major highlight. The theme for the conference is Beyond Boundaries, Redefining HR in a Data-Driven World. I am Pius Kojo Bakadara. We'll be here at 1 p.m. with the Marketplace. Good afternoon. Let's do sports now. On the join you today with me, Muftao Nabila Abla Wembley Sports Construction Limited, is 10 years old. The chief executive officer of the company, which is specialized in the construction of associative pitches in the country, says that his vision is to ensure they have many pitches across the country that will help uh, the Ghana Football Association and other people who are interested in discovering talents in the country have been able to unearth those talents.
Please Post Construction began its journey about a decade ago with the construction of the Wembley Sports Complex in Kotobabi. The company shot to limelight when former Black Stars captain Asamwajan engaged them to build an astrotech for his alma mater Accra Academy. Robert Coleman recalled the genesis of this journey and the impact it has made in society. Humility is the word that I would say it, it, it brings me memories where I started from, the family in which I was born to, and it also humbles me. That's what I can say. Because looking at the vision that I had and the fact that within these 10 years we have been able to uh, change the perception, the way people uh, decided to see AstroTef and the fact that the government itself has endorsed this project, I'm extremely excited. And let me use this opportunity to commend His Excellency Nanado Dankwa Kufuado and His Excellency Dr. Mahmoud Bapaomi. I think they have been phenomenal. And I will also want to show appreciation to the former mayor of Accra who gave us the first approval together with Elvis Afri Ankara, the local government minister then. Now let's take a look at the UEFA Champions League fixtures for tonight as the competition makes a return. On Tuesday, Manchester United they were knocked out after suffering a 1 0 loss against Bayern Munich, courtesy of a goal from Kingsley Coleman. Tonight, it's Atletico Madrid versus Lazio. Celtic will come again, Fire Not, Dortmund will play PSG. Newcastle United will come with AC Milan. And this is the game we will bring you commentary on Joy 99.7 and also on H103.9 FM. And then we also have Red Selbach versus Manchester City. RB Leipzig will play Young Boys. Porto will play Shakhtar Donetsk and Royal Antwerp. They will come up against Barcelona. So these are the matches to expect tonight in the UEFA Champions League. That's your sports for now. We do have more sports stories on myjoyonline.com and also at 2 p.m. when we come your way with sports today. We appreciate your time. Time to check out what's making headlines elsewhere. Former Sierra Leone President NS by Koroma has been declared a suspect in the ongoing investigation over last month's attempted coup. Mr. Koroma, who was granted bail, has been put under house arrest. The Inspector General of Police on Tuesday said Mr. Koroma is not in police custody as the force is giving him the respect he needs for now. That does not mean he is above the law, Mr. Selu added. He said that 80 suspects were in police custody custody among them serving and dismissed military officers, serving and retired police officers, civilians and a correctional service officer. Mr. Koroma's daughter, Danke Koroma, was also named among 54 wanted suspects in a list the police updated on Tuesday. The government has promised a monetary reward to anyone with information that could lead to the capture of these suspects. Meanwhile, ECOWAS, an alliance of West African countries, has approved the deployment of its military to Sierra Leone. That is it for World News, and that's how we wrap up the bulletin this afternoon. My name is Aisha Rhyme. Log on to myjoyonline.com for more of the news. You will see news, including speaker's position on the OSP is valid. Uh, that's from Kofi Bento. There's other stories also on myjoyonline.com if you log on. My name is Aisha Rhyme. Once again, do enjoy the rest of our programs.